everybody, I'm Laura. Yes, that is me in the photo looking super goofy, but it doesn't matter. I was very happy living in Ethiopia. I'm American. People thought I was Ethiopian. I know I look Abisha, so I had to learn how to say Amarinya Achilum because I did not speak enough on heart to carry on a conversation. Anyway, the next couple of photos, I look pretty angry. Ignore that because the coffee was amazing. I want to talk to you about the Ethiopian coffee because it is the best in the world and well, makes a lot of sense because it's believed to have originated there. And coffee, I'm telling you, is a huge part of Ethiopian culture and the traditional coffee ceremony where they roast coffee beans over an open flame and then grind them by hand and brew them in a clay pot called a jibina. I think I pronounced that right, jibina, jibina. Anyway, it's done for guests that are visiting in your home or for holidays or, I don't know, just because I'm telling you they drink coffee all the time. This is an Ethiopian brand called Kaldi. Yes, the logo is suspiciously kind of familiar, but anyway, their coffee is really good and they have Kaldi coffee shops all over the city, but they also have other independent coffee shops. Really, you can find coffee on every single corner. Here I am enjoying a nice cup of coffee with my driver, having a great time, hanging out because it's just a social thing that you do every day. And of course, here I am on Christmas and I was at a friend's house, she prepared a lovely meal, and then afterwards we had coffee. I'm telling you, coffee every single day. The cups of coffee are really not that big, so it's fine. We drink it every single day. Rarely you put milk in it, but sometimes they do. You can drink it black though, because it's so rich and so delicious that you really don't need to put anything in it. And look, they will even bring you coffee to your car. Look at this young lady. She made some coffee and she's bringing it to my car or I was drinking it right there in the front seat. And you can put in a little sprig of a plant called a tena adam and stir that around. And I'm telling you, it's tasty. And of course, you can go out and get fancy coffee as well. So I'm telling you, however you want it prepared, you can find it in Ethiopia. But don't sleep on the tea because the hibiscus tea is also native to the area. It's so delicious. You just take some of those dried flowers, throw them in a cup, and throw on boiling water and voila, delicious tea. Now, Ethiopian cuisine is well known around the world for its distinctive flavor and for how spicy it is. Here you can see a whole platter of food on injera, that's that spicy bread, which I will talk about more later. But we usually got the bayena too, which was all a selection of all vegetarian food. And it's really spicy because they often use a spice called berber powder, which is a blend of chili powders, garlic, ginger, paprika, and fenugreek. And it's really the most popular ingredient that's added to stews. And you can buy those ingredients in the market. And mamita is another super spicy mix of chili peppers, cumin, and other spices, and it's often eaten with bread. So you can go and buy these things in the market. I have a lot of photos here from Mercato, which is the largest open air market in Africa. Can you even imagine? It is enormous. You can find pretty much everything you want there, in, from spices to coffee to avocados, potatoes, and beans, and tomatoes, and collard greens, to jabinas and snacks. They have that along with meats or animals if you want it super fresh. But it's a great place to go to get all of your ingredients. You can see there's some sea salt even. And like I said, it is absolutely enormous. So as you're wandering around, it is very easy to get lost. So I typically would not go. My driver would go for me and or I would go on a Saturday with him because like I said, it was absolutely enormous. But it's great because you could get a whole variety of things and they were just super, super fresh. But I preferred to just go shopping in our little corner market next door. It was so cute and I would just go there and pick out my own vegetables and fruits right there. Because the guys that owned that market were so nice and always gave a fair price. So we would shop there pretty much every two or three days. And they also made the most amazing fresh fruit smoothies. We would get those too. And my daughter liked to hang out with their cat named Demet, which just means cat. <laughs> The 
food is so good. I mean, look at this variety. It's bright, it's colorful, it's healthy, it's nutritious. And we would often get the vegetarian food just served up on a platter of injera. So underneath that, you can see what looks like bread. And that's the spongy, tangy um, bread made out of teff, which is a grain grown in the highlands. And it's very nutritious. It's nutritious. It has protein, fiber, magnesium, iron, calcium. And if you buy it in Ethiopia, it's also gluten-free. And Ethiopians will buy it each day. They really don't like leftover left injera. So you just go to the market and buy it fresh. And it's a fermented food and it's very filling. So it balances your gut flora and it makes you feel really full. So it's sometimes an acquired taste for people, but once you live there and eat it all the time, you really love it. Our favorites, two of our favorites, are Misrawat and Roman. On the left is Misrawat, which is red lentils, really spicy and delicious. And on the right, Roman is made out of collard greens. I'm telling you, so delicious. My daughter's favorite was shiro, and you can see that's kind of the smooth one in the middle, and that's a chickpea stew that was simmered with garlic and onions and so spicy and delicious. Our favorite restaurant that we used to go to was called um, Asmara Shiro. It was right across the street from my job, and they used to have gigantic portions, and I could feed me and my daughter and my driver a ton, a ton of food for under $10, and we just loved it. So I don't know if you've ever had Ethiopian food, but like I said, it is very healthy, it's very nutritious, and so delicious, full of protein and fiber and all these good things, and there's so much variety that you can always find something you love. There's my daughter being silly on Christmas Day because she's so thrilled <laughs> to be eating Ethiopian food. So you can also get cold food along with it. They can serve a salad with like a beet salad or a tomato salad along with your hot food. But we typically got vegetarian food because my daughter had a really hard time seeing the adorable animals on the street, which were there because they were for sale for dinner. And I have to say, that was kind of challenging to see these sweet animals wandering around the roads and to know that they were going to become somebody's meal. I mean, I understand that's just how it works. That's the food chain and all of that. But it was difficult for me as well. So we became vegetarian <laughs> while we were in Ethiopia, which is kind of crazy when you think about it because clearly the food there is very fresh, <laughs> fresher and healthier certainly than it is in the United States. So if I was going to meet and eat meat anywhere, I should have eaten it there in Ethiopia. Wow. if you want to get your average typical processed food you can find that there and if you want to get food from a restaurant there's a whole variety of restaurants from Chinese food to Japanese food to Mediterranean food to oh really good Italian food so you can get a good breakfast you can get I'm just telling you there's an assortment this is our favorite burrito place opium if you really want your fix of guacamole you can even get it delivered, but don't count on it arriving anytime soon. <laughs> Bacon brew had great breakfasts and brunch foods. And oh my gosh, our favorite pizza was a foy. Can we just take a moment to look at that pizza box? Look at that beautiful black family. Love it, love it, love it. Of course, there are pastries all over town. You can get them even fasting, quote unquote, which means they're not made with any animal products. There's sugar cane and popcorn. Oh, and polo was one of my favorite snacks. It's like a roasted barley with peanuts and I'm not sure, but very addictive. If you want a Coke, it's there with Amharic on the label. I mean, come on, so cool to see that, right? If you want beer, they have great local Ethiopian beer, which is inexpensive. And of course there's delicious gelato and ice cream that can be found over town, all over town. We went there frequently. Our favorite was Embwa. We really, really love Embwa ice cream. I heard that Embwa is like moo, Embwa, not sure. And then there was a lady near me that made french fries. She just would come out in front of her house and slice up potatoes and throw them in oil and sell them. And yes, I did enjoy them. The star of the show to me was the delicious seeded watermelon. 
actually not just the watermelon alone, but all of the delicious fruit you can find and the delicious smoothies that they made out of the fruit. Take a look at some of these pictures. Have you ever been to Ethiopia? Aside from the amazing food and these beautiful flowers, you need to know that Ethiopia has such a rich history and culture. Did you know it was the only African nation to never be colonized? And so because of that, they were able to maintain so many of their unique traditions and practices. It is such a beautiful country. It has lakes, it has mountains, it has deserts, it has beautiful architecture, there's wildlife, and there are hundreds of species of birds. But really, the most important thing about Ethiopia is its people. They are so friendly, so kind, and so beautiful. If you've never been, I highly recommend you book a trip today.